So is this going to be the movie that re-catapults Victoria Justice back into superstardom? Let's find out. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel Lifestyle Critic. I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Afterlife of the Party which is a supernatural comedy movie that was actually really 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 good. It's got a lot of humour, a lot of charm and a lot of heart as well. Now it is very very Netflix and there are going to be certain moments that are going to make you say really? But you know that being said it's very very fun, very very enjoyable a lot of lessons to learn as well and actually really really fast paced as well and I cannot wait to break it down for you in this movie review. So from a storyline point of view we're introduced to two best friends Cassie and Lisa who have been best friends for years and on Cassie's birthday the two of them get into a massive argument and the two of them realise that actually they've grown apart and they live two very different lives as Cassie always wants to party and be the centre of that party whereas Lisa wants to be very introverted and very secluded and just work all the time. At the end of that party, Cassie comes back home and passes out. However, the next morning, she tragically hits her head in the bathroom and then passes away and then she wakes up in the afterlife and finds out that she needed to help three people back on earth to have complete closure of her life and to be permitted, therefore, into heaven. And the film then explores whether or not she is going to be successful in achieving this within a ticking time bomb type scenario as well. Now from a positive point of view, this movie is really, really great because it both balances comedy and truly hard hitting emotional scenes really, really well. It's also relatively easy to follow. And the fact that they were able to film and make this movie during the COVID pandemic, I think is a massive achievement in and of itself because you wouldn't be able to tell because it's just made so, so well. A lot of people in certain scenes and therefore it doesn't even feel like a film that was made during the pandemic which I think is really, really cool. And they put their own new spin on the whole afterlife mythology. And it also does make you question certain decisions that you want to make while you're still alive as well, which I think is really, really cool. However, from a negative point of view, if I was to be really nitpicky, I guess they could have developed the relationship with Cassie and her parents a little bit more. Also, they could have done a little bit more scene setting ahead of this character dying and going into the afterlife. But you know, that being said, you can see why they did that as the main focus of this film is how she is going to be able to right her wrongs rather than being focused on her life before this. So, you know, from a storyline point of view, I actually feel like Netflix did a really, really good job with this movie. So the cast and characters of Afterlife of the Party are actually really, really good. And there's so many lessons that you can learn from these characters that you can then take away in your own real life, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, of course, we have Victoria Justice, who is playing the Cassie character. Now she does a really, really good job in terms of leading this film and being the main narrator and the main player in this movie. I mean, she does play the character that Victoria Justice plays in all of her movies and her TV shows. But you know, that being said, she is a great character and lead in this film. Like I said, she learns a lot of lessons, for example, forgiveness, letting things go and true friendship. And her character arc from where she is in the beginning of this movie to where she is by the end of this movie is actually really, really inspiring. And I just feel like from a character development point of view, they wrote this character really, really well. Next up, we have Midori Francis, who is playing her best friend, Lisa. And she's a bit of a co-lead in places. And I feel like she does a really, really good job. She's a lot more introverted by comparison and is very work-centric and isn't really interested in exploring a romance, even though she is quite interested in her neighbour character and actually she learns a lot of lessons throughout this movie as well. For example, getting out of your comfort zone and also a lot about self-belief as well. And I really like their friendship based scenes, both when Cassie was alive and when she is in the afterlife as well. I feel like those are really, really hard hitting. And especially in the third act, there's a lot of powerful and emotional scenes which I think both of these actresses lead really, really well. Next up, we have Robin Scott, who is playing the Guardian Angel Val character. Now, some of her jokes land really, really well, and they're actually pretty funny. Some of them don't land that well. But you know, that being said, she does a really good job in terms of being the character that is doing a lot of exposition and is explaining how the afterlife works and explains what the character needs to do and is always checking up on her to see if she's able to fulfill her mission within her five-day time period. And actually, she does a really good job as that guardian angel character and actually her scenes with the Cassie character are really, really great as well. Next up we have Adam Garcia and Gloria Garcia who are playing the parents to the Cassie character. 
and they're really really decent as well i feel like they've got their own mini storylines going on as well while cassie was alive she felt like her father was a little bit too smothering and always wanted to connect with this character she kind of put a lot of distance between the two of them and would always delay and deprioritize her time with her father versus when she is coming back in the afterlife I feel like it's really, really interesting as she then values her father a lot more, which I think is really, really powerful. The storyline with her mother, however, is a little bit different as her mother walked out on both of them. And as such, she has completely lost contact with her mother character. And so I feel like it's so interesting as you can totally understand it from the Cassie character's point of view, based upon the fact that this character walked out on them and therefore she doesn't really want to have a relationship with this character. But then when she comes back in the afterlife, the decisions that she makes is really, really interesting especially as her mother has another daughter so she's got a bit of a half sister so i just feel like from a character's point of view they wrote all of them especially all of their scenes really really well from a scenes point of view and in turn their storylines are actually really really powerful so from a visuals point of view they actually look pretty decent in this movie you can tell that they've got pretty high production values in this film which is really really cool i mean they go to quite a few different locations and also there's a little bit of magic in there as well, which is always really, really great. It does feel a little bit sitcom -y in certain moments, but you know, that being said, it is really, really cool. And also the afterlife in particular does feel a little bit comedic, but I do feel like it works with the tone that they're having for this movie. And so from a visuals point of view overall, it's actually pretty decent as well. <laughs> So in terms of comparisons, I would say conceptually, it's very similar to the recently released Pixar film Soul and also the classic Ghost. And it does have a little bit of an Age of Adeline concept in there as well. Now, tonally, I would say it is very, very Netflix. So it's very much got a bit of a trust factor in there. He's all that, the perfect guy and the kissing booth as well. But you know, it is an original story that I actually do think can stand on its own as well. <laughs> So overall, I really, really enjoyed Afterlife of the Party. I wasn't sure what to expect from this movie, but I definitely was pleasantly surprised. And it's really, really well made as the first two acts of this movie are really, really fun, really, really easy going. And then the final act of this movie definitely packs a true emotional punch. And the twists in this movie are really, really cool as well. And so for all of those reasons, I have to give it a solid seven out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.